Well, I had planned that this video would be about building a mini lawyer's bookcase, but I didn't plan ahead for how I'd handle the overhead hanging doors. So after I'd put together the two shelf bookcase, I put the lawyer's bookcase on hold and decided I'd turn this into a combination bookcase hutch. In a world, a tiny miniature world, that exists only in her imagination. Hi y'all, I'm Tippy Cal, Mini Maker Sal's imaginary friend and video narrator. I'll be taking you through her process of building a bookcase hutch. Sal planned on using a purple heart wood veneer on the outside of the piece, so she mixed up some acrylic paints to make match that purple heart color and painted the basswood surfaces that would be visible, but wouldn't be covered by the veneer. After gluing the back and sides of the shelf section, Sal glued in some 1 16th inch wide sticks to rest the inner shelf on. When those supports dried, she glued the side and back edges and the top of the sticks to put it all together. She glued the top of that section on and this was the result. Just a simple two shelf bookcase. Because this was going to be a lawyer's bookcase originally, Sal glued quarter inch wide strips of 16th inch basswood to the top and bottom front of the case. She then glued another quarter inch strip to the middle shelf, not paying attention that she had the shelves section upside down. See how the supports are on the top shelf? She later glued similar supports to the front of the other shelf so all would look the same. Sal decided to varnish a piece of the veneer with clear polyurethane as she wanted the bookcase hutch to be shiny. She later decided there was really no good reason to varnish before cutting and gluing. Using wood glue, Sal first covered the back of the self check section with the veneer, then weighed it down to dry. She then built the base of the hutch with two doors and a drawer. This photo shows all the pieces. And another view of those pieces. After gluing the bookcase section to the bottom of the hutch and letting that dry, Sal glued in a couple of sticks to the back of the drawer and another across what would be the top of the drawer section so the drawer could not pull out without tilting it, as seen on the upcoming clip. That's how the stoppers work for the drawer. Then Sal noticed the right door of the bottom shelf is not sitting right, so... Since the bottom of that right hinge was a bit loose, Sal first tested it if it would straighten out by using a piece of tape. She cut out and glued a piece of her painted linen with tight bond and put it into place to tighten up the bottom of that door. And it worked. The door hung straighter. I just mentioned the painted linen hinge, but I had skipped way ahead, so let's back up. Sal painted a thin piece of linen to use for the door hinges. She then cut and folded the hinges and glued to the inside of the doors. Sal next glued each hinge to the inside of the hutch after those hinges dried, Sal painted them with her purple heart colored acrylic paint. Using some wood buttons she bought at her neighborhood Ace Hardware, Sal painted them in that purple heart color. She then glued them to the bottom of the hutch and let them dry. Using some rounded sticks she had that are a bit thicker than toothpicks and thinner than chopsticks, Sal glued two pieces together to make a drawer handle. After they dried, she used a wood chisel tapped by a hammer to cut the edges more evenly. After gluing the drawer and door handles in place, she first painted them with the purple heart color and then added spots of dark purple to give them a brassier look. Of course, you're seeing them here much larger than you'd see in real life. The drawer handle is about one inch long. And this is what the bookcase hutch looked like when it was all done, except for that hinge fix I showed a few minutes ago. 
Sal missed getting pictures of gluing the shelves to the hutch base, adding veneer in other places as needed, varnishing the pieces that needed it. But hey, she's still learning and focusing more on the building of her minis, not video. Coming up, the next video might be the lawyer's bookcase, or maybe the floor and walls of the book nook, or who knows, whatever it is, it'll be what Mini Maker Sal feels like doing. As Tippy just told you, I'm not certain where my mini making will take me next. I suspect it'll be the making of the book nook structure itself, but I know I often follow my own flights of fancy. I do thank you so much for viewing this. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and make a comment or question below. See you next time.